Welcome everybody to the second video in my EV3 programming series. In this video, I'll teach you how to use the flow control blocks, more specifically the weight block and the loop block, and how they're utilized within the scope of the EV3 programming. If you haven't seen my first video, I highly recommend you go check it out, as I talk to you about the basics about the move tank block and the move steering block and how they can be used in order to control your robot. Without further ado, let's get into the content. First of all, go to the panel and go to flow control, which is going to be the orange panel. Down here, you'll see the second block from the left, you'll see a weight block, which has a hourglass on the left side. Basically, what this block will do in terms of how it operates within the program is it will run the program and it will basically, well, wait for a second. Basically, this block is used to separate the two other blocks particularly moves, move blocks from each other. Of course, let's download this program and see how it works in real life. So after downloading the program, let's play lesson one. And in reality, it will go one rotation forward and then wait one second and then turn 90 degrees. Let's see how it works. So we can see that our robot did exactly how we programmed it to do, and this is the, pro the purpose of the weight command. Now that we know that this program works, how are some other ways we can control our weight block? Well, we can change the time second, the time delay. So if we change it to 5 seconds, what will then happen with the program? The program will then wait 5 seconds instead of the traditional 1 second, which means that we will have a longer program and a longer period of time between the move forward and the turn command. Let's download it and try. So if we run this program, we can probably expect the exact same result, except we can expect a 5 second wait instead of a 1 second wait. Let's see what happens. It moves forward 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and now it should turn. So this is exactly the result we were expecting in our robot, and that means our wait block has successfully been executed. So what are some other ways we can use the weight block? Well, we can go click on the time button down here, and we can see a variety of options where we can use the brick buttons, sensors, all sorts of sensors, and Bluetooth messaging, NXT sound sensors, and all of these. What we're interested in right now is using the brick button. So we can set the brick button to uh, compare brick buttons. It's going to look like this. Basically, what this block does is the first column will say the set of brick button IDs. If you click the drop down menu, you can see that when the left is pressed, when the center is pressed, right, up and down are pressed, respectively. And also the second state is going to be either released, pressed, or bumped. And the majority of cases, you'll either be using pressed or bumped, whichever the one is most accessible for you. We'll keep it for pressed for now, and we'll keep it as the center button for now. So what this will do is it will run this uh, command until you press the center button, and then it will run the last turn command. So in order to use, like, utilize this block properly, we're going to have to set the motor command to on. The reasoning for this is we want this motor command to run infinitely, while this in the background is also running, trying to stop this motor block. In order for this to work properly, then we are going to first of all remove our turn block, and copy over this move block. You do this by holding down control and holding down click, and you can make a copy of that block. From here, turn the on to an off block. Essentially, what this basic program does is it will run the robot forward at a speed of 50, and then it will continuously wait for the center brick button to be pressed. As soon as that happens, it will stop the robot. Let's see what happens. So if we see a robot and we run program one, Essentially what it'll do is it will run infinitely, and as you can see, the wheels are turning constantly. And what it's doing is essentially running the infinite move command until I press the center button, in which case it will run the motor stop command. So let's see what happens. If I press the center button, the robot stops. The reason why this happens is the wait block waits for me to input the center brake button in order to stop the motor wheels. So if you can, as you can see, if I run it again and I play it immediately, I press the center button immediately, the wheels will stop immediately. And if I don't press the center button, this program will run essentially infinitely until the battery dies. Um, so let's 
This program works pretty well. Uh, let's go back and see what else we can do with a loop ball. Now let's go to the loop command. To do this, go to the flow control again and click on the loop block. It looks like essentially this large block. Um, you can take out all of our previous program and you can delete it all. Essentially, what this does is it loops whatever's inside it over and over and over again. What you can do with this is many things. So if you grab a move tank block, which is basically moving our robot forward, and we set it to, for example, half a rotation, this essentially will move forward half a rotation, but then it will loop back. And what it will do is it will run half a rotation again, loop back, half a rotation, etc. because we have it set to unlimited. If we run this program on our robot, we can see exactly what happens. If we run our program, we can then see how the loop works. Essentially, it'll move forward, stop, move forward, stop, move forward, stop again. And as you can see, that small jerk in between is that loop command running. And because it moves a little bit to the and a little bit forward, and then stops, and then re goes back to that move forward command, it essentially will do that infinitely. You see, it will move half a rotation forward every time. And although you can't necessarily see it from the wheels, you can hear it from the sound that if you hear closely, you can actually hear each of the move commands moving as a single half turn symbolizes that move block moving once and then another one, that loop making it go back again and again and again and again. That's how the loop block works. Now that we know the basics of the loop, let's see how we can make control the loop and make it end instead of running infinitely until the battery dies because we don't want the battery to die most of the time at least so if we click on the infinite button we can see that we can actually end the loop with a multitude of ways we'll ignore the sensors for now and we'll go to count and essentially this count button means that this loop will rotate one time before ending so it'll play this it'll loop around one more time play it again so it essentially runs the block twice and then it will move on to the stop key. so in order to indicate that we know that the loop has actually finished let's go down to the action block and pick out the little sound block now we actually haven't covered this so drag the block up and we'll co go over how it works now what the sound block does is well it plays a sound from your ev3 brick and if you go to play file, you can you see you can either play a file, which is essentially like words or sentences. You can play a tone, which is like basically a pitch, and you can play a note on the piano. So we're actually going to go to a play tone right now. And you can see the frequency, you can see the duration, volume, and play type, you don't actually have to know right now. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with I guess music notes. But if you click on the frequency, you can see that there's C, C sharp, D, basically all the notes on a normal keyboard. And these are the pitches that you can have access to on this. Plus you can have a little bit of in the middle. For example, if you see the G sharp and the A, I can put in, for example, 430. And that will play like somewhere in between G sharp and A, which is a little bit of a weird um, feature that they have, but also quite cool if you want to do some specific things. Right now we can just set it to A. Um, the duration essentially is how long it will play. If we set this to 3 seconds, that sound will play for 3 seconds. Volume is pretty self-explanatory. It plays at max volume. And this will basically play until it finishes. So it, it will basically play for 3 seconds. So now what this will do is essentially it will move forward 0.5 rotations, loop around, move 0.5 rotations again, and at the very end it will play our sound. Let's see how it works. If we run our program, what it will actually do. So if we run, we can expect it to run forward tw two times 0.5 degrees, if my explanation was correct. But if we see, if we run this program, it actually moves forward, we'll wait until it finishes, it actually moves forward half a rotation. So what happened? Why didn't it run two rotations? Well, this is actually a feature of the loop block that you have to get used to. So let's go back to the program and see exactly what happened. Let's see exactly what happened. Let's take out this block for now. And 
let's see how the loop works. So, how the loop works, if we look carefully, is it actually goes from the start block to this area. And this area you might see is kind of useless to us so far. Like, it only contains one of these wires, which I'll be covering in a later episode, and really nothing else. But what this actually does is it counts the amount of times the loop block runs. So if the start block runs into this, that already senses the first time, even before running this block, that the loop already has a count of one. And this count block essentially counts how many times we run through this block. So essentially, we run through this, it has a tick of one. And this checks to see if it has a tick of one, which of course it does. Essentially, this loop, this loop block is useless because it counts a one and it sees that it counts a one and it ends the loop. So essentially, if you want this to loop once, you have to put this as two. If you want this to loop two times, then you have to loop it three times. See what I mean about the loop block being semi-confusing? This is a feature that you're going to have to use a lot more often as we move into the more complicated math block preferences, and especially if we get, as we get into more and more complicated programs. Let's go back and let's try to fix our old program. So let me ask you a question. How many times do we now have to put the count block in order for this to loop one time or essentially play this block twice? Yeah, absolutely correct. Even though I can't hear you, I can hear you through my computer screen saying two. Well, because one plus one is two. And if we put back our play block, which plays too long, as I've seen uh, talking over me, not talking over me, playing over me, we'll put it to one second, not 21 seconds, one second. And this program should do exactly what I laid out beforehand, which is loop this block twice, essentially move forward one rotation, then play this a really annoying sound. Let's download and run. So let's see if our robot actually behaves properly this time. Run the program and we can see that it will do basically exactly what we set it out to do. There we go. You see it ran twice the move forward half a rotation command and it played the short beep that we programmed it to. Essentially this program works perfectly. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, or the second episode rather, of my programming series. Next time we're going to be covering sensors more particularly the color sensor. So be sure to catch my build video where I attach the color sensor onto the robot, explain essentially what it does for next episode. Next episode, actually, we're going to be moving on to the switch block and we're gonna be moving on to the color sensor block. And we're gonna be attempting to follow a black line and do some other cool things with the color sensor. I'll see you guys next time. Be sure to like and subscribe. Bye bye.